Before we get started on coding in Python, I want to give a quick overview of how this class works and what methods are going to be most useful. We have this overarching class, which is the tomography class. You can use this to set the configurations and then give it the data and it'll give us our results. There's a couple different ways of how you can import the configurations and data. The constructor, which is when you initialize an object of this class, is going to set default values in the settings, and then you can use set conf setting to set specific configuration settings. Please don't set the dictionary conf directly. Use this method so that it can handle if you type in yes or no or one or zero, stuff like that. This will not, and you can, you can run into errors. Import and conf is going to import the configuration file, which is just going to set all the settings and configurations. Import data is going to give the class all the data and measurements, and then it will give us the results. Import eval is going to do both of these things, so it will set the, the settings, and then it will give the data, and we will get our results. Import data and import eval calls this function state underscore tomography, which is like the big function that does the tomography. So this is the state underscore tomography function. This is the main function that is going to be called when you import the, either the data file or the eval file. The inputs are going to be raw counts and intensities. So if we take a look at what a data file looks like and what it contains, right here is going to be sent in for raw counts and then down at the bottom is going to be what's sent in for intensities. This function does three things. It filters all this data. It runs linear tomography to get a good estimate of what the density matrix could be. And then it runs maximum likelihood to get a more accurate representation of the density matrix. And that density matrix is going to be the ROG or the row. And then we also get the overall intensity of our tomography. And then we also get this FVAL or FVALP this is going to tell us how well this optimization did, this maximum likelihood. Values greater than the number of measurements means it had trouble estimating the density matrix, and this is going to lead us to believe the density matrix rho or rog might not be so accurate or useful. So now that we know a little bit about how this code works, let's jump in and actually write some code. Okay, so I've done a couple things just to set things up. I have this Python script, which we're going to be using. I have a Python eval file that contains the data. This is the same one I used in the last video, but if you haven't seen that, that's all right. Everything that's important will be reiterated in this video. And then I've also installed the library with pip. It's as easy as importing any other library. Just do pip install quantum-tomography. And then the IDE I'm going to be using is called PyCharm. Obviously, any, any IDE works, even if you're just using Notepad and the command line. But I'm going to be using PyCharm, so I can easily show you guys the source code and the comments in there, as well as debug anything if, if anything should go wrong. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is import our library and then create an object of it. So we do import quantum tomography, and we'll import it as qklib. You can import it as whatever you want. And then we'll create a new instance of the tomography class. We'll name it T. And to do that, we do qklib.tomography. I did not capitalize this L. And I also need parentheses. Next thing we need to do is import our configuration settings and import the data. If we remember earlier, the import eval is going to do both of those things. Let's take a look at the source code for that function. If we scroll down, we can find import eval. So it takes in this eval text, the path to the eval file, and then it returns these things right here. Here's our script, and we want a relative path to this, this file here. So we're going to do t dot import eval. And then we're going to dot dot slash to go out of the folder. And then we want python eval.txt. Remember, this method returns these three things. Just to be quick, I'm going to go down to here and just copy this. 
just so we can easily get our outputs formatted in the correct way. And that's all there is to it. It's pretty easy, especially if you're just importing the eval file. You get the results back right here, and then you can do different things with this output data. So if we take a look at our reference page, we can see some examples of those methods. So if we go down here, here's all the methods for the class, and then we have other methods that are contained in the library. So we can calculate the negativity, entropy, concurrence. In this example, I'm going to be calculating the fidelity between our output state and what we know it should be our expected state. Here we can see you give it two states, and this can either be pure states or density matrix. In our case, we're going to be putting in density matrices, and then it's going to give us the fidelity value. We do fidelity equals, and since this fidelity function is not a part of the class, it's just the function in the library, we're going to do qklib fidelity and it comes up right there and our first state is going to be the rog and then the next state is going to be our expected state so i've went ahead and inputted the data for our expected state we should be getting a density matrix that corresponds to two horizontally polarized photons and we should get a fidelity between one if our output state is almost the same as our expected state. I added these two lines. This is going to pr print our fidelity value. And then this is going to pr print the last output of our tomography class. So this is going to print the density matrix as well as properties of that density matrix. So if we run it, it ran and we got this as an output. You can see most of these values are close to zero, very small. And these are actually zero. It rounds off after 10 to the negative 8. You can see our top left value is close to 1. So we should get a value, a fidelity value that's very close to 1, which we got. So that was very easy and not a lot of code. But let's say we don't want to import the eval file. Let's say we want to import a comp file and a data file. So we can actually make the comp and data file pretty easily. So I'm just going to name this conf.txt, and I'm going to make another one called data.txt. This eval file contains the data for both of these. So all of this is going to be data for the conf file. So we can just go ahead and paste that in there, save it, and then everything else goes in the data file. So we paste that and then we save it. So we have easily just created a conf and data file just from this Python eval file. And why would we want to do this? Well, if we have multiple data files and they correspond to the same settings, then we can import the conf, the configurations, and then we can do multiple tomographies on all your other data. So let's go back here. And instead of importing the eval file, we're going to be importing the comp. So let's take a look at that source code. Should be up here. Here's import data, and here's import comp. So it's just like the eval. We're just going to be putting in the relative file path. Uh, that's what we named it. And we should change this to import comp. And our import conf doesn't return anything. It just sets the configurations in the settings. So we should get rid of this. I'm going to copy it first. But we get rid of the, that because it's not giving us anything. Import the data file. And it's just like everything else, data.txt. So everything looks good. And you can see we got the same exact results. So, so far, so good. And it's really easy if you're just using the text files to import all your data. Let's say we don't want to do that and we want to do everything in Python. So to do that, I'm going to create new data that corresponds to a single qubit that is horizontally polarized. So our expected state, what we should be getting out, 
should look something like this. We're not going to be using these files because that's data for a different tomography. We can take a look at what this initialization does and what settings it sets. So if we go to the source code, when we initialize an object in the default constructor, it sets all of these settings. All of these settings are pretty good for what we want if we're doing perfect tomography in our example. The only thing we should change is the number of qubits. Instead of a two, we want a one. So to do that, we do t.setComp setting, and we can set the n qubits. We can set that to one. So now that we've set up all the configuration settings appropriately, we can now import the data. And instead of importing our data files, we're going to skip the middleman and just use the state underscore tomography function. So if we take a look at that source code, state underscore tomography, scroll down till we find the function. You can see that we give it the raw counts and intensities, and then it returns this. So we're gonna copy that equals t dot state underscore tomography. And then we give it our tomo input or our raw counts. And then we also give it our intensities. I'm just gonna name it in 10. And if you remember the date, the import data file takes these two things and calls this function. So it sends uh, this tomo input as the raw count, and then it sends this intensity as the other parameter. So I'm going to copy this, but I'm not going to copy the tomo input because I'm going to show you how you can create something like that. That's going to be our in 10. We also need the tomo input. And we can get, we can make this easily by using a function called get tomo input template and to do this you can send in the number of bits you want for your tomography or if you don't send in anything for the parameters it'll just use whatever is set in your configurations so since we already set the number of qubits to one here if we just call this function it's going to return tomo input template for one qubit since this is only a template, we still have to input data for our counts. So I'm going to debug this so we can stop it right here and we can take a look at what this function actually gave us. I want to mention that I shortened the intensity to six because we're only doing six measurements in our single qubit tomography as opposed to the full 16 that we did in our two qubit. So we can take a look at what this method gave us. It gave us this big matrix with a bunch of numbers in it, and we can kind of deduce what this might mean, but if we want full detail, we can go into this class, and all the way at the top, we have a description for how this Tomo input matrix should be inputted and formatted. So the first value is going to represent the row and then the second one is going to represent the column so we can see for all the rows the first column is going to represent the time value and then the next one this is going to say a range from one to two which since we're working in python it doesn't include the two it's just the one so here is our singles which we would use for accidental correction but we actually don't use accidental corrections for single qubit tomography. It just doesn't make sense. So let's move on to coincidences. This is going to be all the rows and column number two. So right here, this is where we should put in our coincidences. And then the rest of them is going to be the measurement. I also forgot to note that we are doing one detector per qubit. So we're going to be following these instructions. If we were doing two detectors per qubit, we would be following these instructions here. So I created this fake data. We can go ahead and run this and we can see what we get. We got our results and we can see the stay here is very close to what we expected. In fact, our fidelity is very high 
And we can see the purity is very high too, which is good since we're simulating a pure state. And where it says NA, it's not apl applicable because this is only for stuff that involves multiple qubits. That's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this two-part series.